All right. Hello and welcome to the episode number 35 of the Mass Effect Lorecast. I am your host for tonight in Seven Legend. Tom is actually having to take the night off because he's not feeling that well, but that's okay because with me, I have our wonderful patrons who are joined uh, for the trivia show part two. So this trivia show is going to be a little bit different because I'm actually going to be participating in it and I'm going to be like you know getting asked some of these questions as well so i'm gonna see if i can keep up with our wonderful patrons my guess is that i can't uh these are some seriously smart people in here uh so basically the rules are pretty simple right everyone is going to be allowed to answer or ask three to five questions we're going to go around in a circle kind of round robin style and uh, each person asks one at a time, right? Uh, and these can be multiple choice questions. They can be open answer, hopefully hopefully not too open-ended of an answer. Uh, but all of them, of course, are going to be about Mass Effect, the lore, the games, you name it. Uh, all of the questions are going to be weighted the same amount of points. So that means the same number for each question. And we can decide that a little bit later. But first, why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? Because I do see some new faces joined by some familiar faces here. So why don't we start? I have my gallery view here in Zoom. I'm going to start with my left and make my way counterclockwise. So let's not. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm let's not. <laughs> so I'm a fan uh, of Mass Effect. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, what, so when did you start uh, playing Mass Effect? How long ago? Uh, I think I first bought the trilogy in 2013 or 2014. I had just gotten my brother's PlayStation 3 when he upgraded to the PS4, and I sold literally every game that he had in order to buy it, and I never looked back from then. Awesome. Awesome. And I got to ask, which ending? Oh, uh, I think my very first time... I did synthesis because I knew that I didn't have enough points to get Shepard lives ending. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's go down from, uh, let's not pipe man, your familiar face. How, how's it going tonight? It's, it's good. Uh, it's 10 30 out here. So, you know, you might have to wake me up at some point, but I'm always, ha always happy to be here. And for those of you who are listening in after the live show, you, you can't see it, but Pipe Man has an amazing effect going on in the background of his place. He, in his window, uh, or what I assume is a wall with a green screen, it has the depiction of the window from Anderson's apartment in Mass Effect 3 with tons of, you know, hover cars zooming by, and it just looks amazing. It's very well done. So that's pretty cool. This is what you're missing if you're uh, not joining the live stream. I'll, I'll post the link where you can download this one. And I think there's the CIC on the Normandy. You can also download. I'll, uh, I'll post that link in the Discord where you can download them for free. Awesome. Yes. And that's what you're missing if you're not part of the Discord as well. Plus, you get to talk with all of us. And I think we're pretty cool. Right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so speaking of cool people, Vervada, how's it going? Oh, it's going great because Let's Not has a kitten and I was just enthralled <laughs> with that kitten just now playing with her earrings. That was amazing. I'm going, doing well. I have a cat in my lap as well. It's always a good time. Alrighty. Nice. Nice. And we have a new face tonight. Mike, how are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Hello, Lorecast audience. So tell us a little bit about how you got started, how you got introduced to Mass Effect. So I have only been playing Mass Effect for like a year. Uh, it was one of one of my many quarantine projects was to get uh, very, very into a video game that was going to make me cry a lot. And so that's pretty much what I did all November and December of last year. Well, you chose the right game. Uh, there have been numerous tearjerker moments in this game, uh, not the least of which was actually involving Anderson uh, there at the end. So, yep, that's mine. That's that I weeped like a baby. Um, <laughs> still do. But Sovereign, I see that you're here again as well. Awesome to see you again. Hey, how's it going? I'm rocking the uh, Medal of Valor here for some good luck. Yeah. Yes, I see that. And uh, for listeners who don't know, Sovereign won the previous trivia show that we held. Uh, how many months ago was that? 
uh, two, September. three. So yeah, is that a trivia question? Because I don't know that one. <laughs> that one's not weighted. That one's not for any points. Uh, but yeah, Sovereign won that one, and because he won that trivia show, he uh, we sent him the Mass Effect Medal of Valor, which he has proudly displayed on his chest there, and it looks amazing. So, right beside the Guinness, and Guinness, of course. My goodness, <laughs> Genesis, how are you? I am doing quite well tonight. Uh, to answer that first question, it was the end of September one, because that was the first one that I joined on. So I remember that. And my cat has also decided to join the stream tonight. Her name is Maya. We have so many kitty cats. Hi, Maya. <laughs> awesome. And we have another familiar face, Psyche. Psyche, how are you doing tonight? I'm great, Sam. It's good to be here. Good. Awesome. So that rounds out uh, the patrons that we have joining us, unless there's someone lurking in the participants that I can't see. Uh, so <laughs> if there is, or if any patrons show up, maybe halfway through the episode, don't be afraid to speak up. Be like, hey, I'm here. Uh, and we'll try and accommodate you as best as we can. But with that being said, I'm just going to review the rules one more time before we get started. And again, I am going to be participating, uh, answering some of these questions. So number one, everyone brought their questions. We may not have time to ask all of them, but we're going to try and get through as much as we can. And we're going to try and split up the time as equally as we can. Number two, the, the, the questions can be open-ended or multiple choice, but if they are open-ended, please have them be, you know, something that we can re relatively answer within 30 seconds. I think 30 seconds is a fair timer uh, for each of the questions. And number three, all the questions are going to be weighted the same number of points. So do we have any preferences for what that number is? Bravada? Oh, I was just doing this for five. I feel oh, like five. that's an easy number to add. <laughs> Yes, I second that notion. Five, is five, five good with everyone. How about four point sure. seven eight? No. <laughs> How about you What's calculate that? Square root of square root of pi or whatever. Imaginary, imaginary numbers is what we should decide upon. No, uh, no but five. we also have our paper and pens or pencils uh, with us. Wow, that blends in very well in my background. Um, that's going to get challenging. Uh, but all I ask is that we write the answer down on the piece of paper. As soon as, you know, the answer comes to you after hearing it, write it down, put your hands down, you know, uh, just to ensure integrity and whatnot. Uh, you know, we have people watching on Twitch. I, I don't think it's going to happen because we're all pretty cool here. But, you know, if someone's Googling, it's like, come on, man, you know. Um, so that being said, um, why don't we get it started? Does anyone have a burning question that they would really like to ask everyone in here? Okay, let's not. Uh, we can start with you. All right. My first question in Mass Effect 2, which of the five cannot be Shepard's favorite store in the Citadel? A, Zakara Cafe, B, Citadel Souvenirs, C, Serta Foundation, D, Seranus Applications, or E, Rodham Expeditions? Okay, can you repeat those answers one more time? Okay, A, Zakara Cafe, B, Citadel Souvenirs, C, Serta Foundation, D, Seranus Applications, or E, Rodham Expeditions? All right. And uh, I will give everyone a second, uh, but it looks like everyone has answered. Okay. If we're all ready to show our answers, why don't we just all put them up in the screen simultaneously? I, I, <laughs> I don't know if you can see mine. <laughs> <laughs> you fully disappeared. <laughs> this is, how about if I like, ah, yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> Can anyone see that? I mean, I can see your paper, but okay, I can't well, not read what's on it. Okay, mine I'm says, saying. here, I'll scoot a little closer. I'll write pretty large next time. This one says A, Zakara. I think just about everyone wrote Zakara, correctly? Correct? 
All right. Yes. And let's remember that Tom said before this episode started that he was going to pick C for everything. So he picked C. Uh, he got third of foundation. Unfortunately, oh. that is not correct. Everyone else who wrote A is correct. It is Zakara Cafe. All right. And keep your tally on your paper there, which ones you got right. So if you got it right, probably easiest to just put a check mark next to the answer since they're all going to be weighted the same. That is the only store in the entire game of Mass Effect 2 that cannot get a discount. So, uh, even at like uh, Ilium or in Omega. Which is a shame, right? Because I would love the discount on all of the cafe food items. Fish which <laughs> And Mass Effect books. <laughs> Uh, and is it Fornax? Is Fornax sold there? Or is Fornax sold at the Fornax is store? at Omega. Oh, Fornax is in Harrods Emporium, isn't it? Yeah, Elcor with the cigar. <laughs> uh, anyway, might not be that store in Omega, uh, but apparently I need to brush up on my Fornax lore. <laughs> <laughs> Got a sexy Preferably. Hannah on the cover. Uh, we can, I'll defer to our two resident Mass Effect relationship experts on that one. Uh, of course, I'm referring to Genesis and Mervada. They, they run a podcast on relationships and video games. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, probably should do that. But we'll save the plugging for the end. Um, th that being said... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I amuse myself. <laughs> that being, is that going to get an explicit tag? I bet it will. Anyways, something will eventually. <laughs> okay, okay. Moving on. Moving on. Does anyone else have a burning question, or maybe we should do this in the same order in which we introduced ourselves? I think same order, so that way it stays consistent. Awesome. awesome. Sam, would you mind telling us what the order is? Because since we're in gallery yes. view, yeah, everybody's order is different. Of course. Um, Pipe Man, give us one of your questions. Okay. Um, I think we'll, we'll start off a little on the easier side. Um, what is Commander Shepard's mother's name? Is it A, Helen, B, Hannah, C, Harper, or D, Harriet? Once again, that's what is Commander Shepard's mother's name? Is it A, Helen, B, Hannah, C, Harper, or D, Harriet? Okay, I think we have everyone. Sovereign, are you ready? All right, Sovereign's ready. Okay, so let's show them. I think, I think people can see mine now. I wrote it pretty, like, I was digging in with that pen, so. <laughs> and of we course, can definitely see your answer now. Yeah, Pipe Man, do you want to go ahead and tell the audience what the answer to that question is? Sure. Um, so I, I'm trying to remember what background you have to play in order to have the conversation. Spacer. It, uh, it is Spacer. Um, but uh, his mother's name is B. Hannah. Um, and actually, I it took me like my third or fourth playthrough to play as a Spacer. Um, so I was just, I was like super surprised that like Shepard had a mother that you could talk to. It was like, call mom. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think I, I didn't play as a spacer probably until my third or fourth playthrough. I think my first couple playthroughs, maybe third, like first three, I pretty much did all the same things. I don't like, like my, my variation, it didn't, it didn't really go a lot. It was like the same background, same psych profile, same everything. Um, and it's so hard even, even now when I start a new playthrough to get away from that, that like, you know, the, uh, what, what did I pick a colonist, uh, and soul survivor, I think were my go-tos yep. and it's Same so here. hard to get away from that. Yeah. Earthborn soul survivor. I like thinking I grew up on the streets. Roughing it, toughing it. 
This is yeah. my first uh, playthrough where I'm doing a uh, war hero, which I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> yes. War hero is also uh, one of my favorites as well. Um, there's some really cool, unique dialogue things that happen in mass effect one, depending on your playthroughs. I know about Hannah being one of the continued ones throughout the trilogy. Uh, if you picked spacer, but um, thank you for the question. Moving on uh, Vervada. What question do you have for us? Okay. I'm scared that I made mine too easy, maybe. I don't know. Um, so I will go with what, this is multiple choice. What famous actor inspired Morden's appearance? A, Clint Eastwood, B, Tommy Lee Jones, C, Ed Harris, or D, Hugh Jackman? Do I need to repeat the I'll repeat the answers. Clint Eastwood, A, B, Tommy Lee Jones, C, Ed Harris, D, Hugh Jackman. I would also like to go on the record that V and I did not share any questions ahead of time. Yeah. If that was ever a thought. <laughs> Judging by everyone's reaction, scribbling away, I'm assuming I did an easy one. I think that we have some super fans here. I think that's safe to go out on a yeah. limb and say that. So I wouldn't say it's any reflection of the question, but how fast we answer is probably just a positive reflection of all of us, how dedicated we are to this game. Um, so that being said, is everyone done answering? Yep. All right. Let's show them then. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of A's. Did everyone answer A? Anyone answer different from A? A would be Clint Eastwood. I think okay. everyone answered Clint Eastwood. Is that the answer, Vervada? That is indeed the answer. Wow, look at that. We are, we are nailing this. What happens if we all score perfect? Why am I asking you? I don't know. I was going to say <laughs> take points away, but I don't want to take my points away. So no. Don't worry, I got one wrong. So, actually, Mike, I think you have a unique question for us. Is that right? I actually have a few unique questions for you. So, a uh, little background on me, uh, since this is my first time here. I'm a uh, professional orchestra musician. I'm a percussionist. I'm a music educator as well. Uh, and I'm also the orchestra manager for, uh, I'll just say, a very major university school of music. I won't tell you which one it is, but I will say that it is a university in Southern California. Uh, Go to your detective work. I'm actually bro broadcasting from my office right now. Oh, don't look at my desk. Um, but uh, I saw so, every grade. You know, well, luckily I'm a staff member, so I don't technically grade people. I was saying uh, a lot of stacks of papers in here. Anyway. Uh, so all of my questions are going to be uh, musical things about Mass Effect because there there is some surprisingly deep musical stuff and not just in the soundtrack. The the writers are learned music people. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, which of these composers wrote uh, Uncharted Worlds, which is the map music. Was it A, Jack Wall, B, David Cates, C, Jimmy Henson, or D, Sam Hulick? Can I get those again, please? Yes. So A, Jack Wall, B, David Cates, C, Jimmy Henson, or D, Sam Hulick. So this is a tricky one. This is the only time I've ever been asked a trivia question about Mass Effect music. So really looking forward to this. Let's see how many of us get this one right. And I feel like I should probably mention spelling. I don't think we're going to be sticklers about spelling as long as we can identify which an answer you, <laughs> you meant. Uh, but if we're all ready to show our answers, why don't we go ahead and put them up? And I don't know if I don't know if the audience can see my answer that easily. 
So I answered Sam Hewlick. That would be D. And I see a couple of other people answered D as well. Yeah, it seems like we've all spent a good time uh, on YouTube listening to 10-hour versions of the uh, map music, which I'm assuming is what everyone did. But yes, uh, D, Sam Hewlick is correct. Uh, a fun fact that I found out actually from doing exactly that uh, is if you one of the YouTube videos with uh, this, which I think is like one of the 10-hour ones, uh, Sam Hewlick's cousin actually commented on it and said, oh, my, my cousin wrote wrote this uh and apparently uh the map music was like his audition to kind of get hired to do uh, a lot of the music making uh so he submitted that as like an audition piece and then was told okay write the music uh and so it almost didn't get used because it wasn't like written while it wasn't written specifically like while he was working uh for bioware uh and then they ended up using it for the mac uh, map music uh it is also jack wall who is the head composer uh for mass effect it is his favorite track of the of the whole piece that's pretty awesome you know and just coming from a totally you know plebeian neophytes point of view uh when it comes to music i hear a lot of distinct similarities between uncharted worlds and vigil and it, it i mean they're they, they 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 sound very themed along the same lines yeah the, i think i feel like uh every mass effect fan feels like vigil or uncharted worlds is like oh the game would it would be an entirely different game without this song and it was i only found out a couple hours ago that uh jack wall who is kind of like the main composer for for everything uh that he felt that it was that was kind of the uh piece that set the tone for like the entire trilogy in in his mind which i thought was really interesting yeah, that's pretty awesome. Love the music trivia. Love it. Thanks, Mike. Uh, and love the unique perspective you bring. Uh, Sovereign, I'm just dying to hear the first question that you've brought. You threatened in the Discord earlier that you were going to wreak havoc on us and, and ask us about the temperatures from the planet cards in, uh, <laughs> in the Mass Effect trilogy. So let's hear the first question you got for us. Oh, I'll be nice. But maybe I'll turn the difficulty up a little bit. Uh, so the question is, what is the name of Conrad Werner's sister? Is it A, oh. Sheila, B, Cassandra, C, Connie, or D, an inanimate bundle of string he found in a closet? <laughs> so once again, what is the name of Conrad Werner's sister? A, Sheila, B, Cassandra, C, Connie, Connie, Conrad Werner, uh, or D, an inanimate bundle of string he found in a closet. I didn't know you had a sister in seven. I, I was waiting to make that joke. I was like, Sam, do you have a sister? <laughs> Party RR. Yeah. So in case uh, our listeners are unfamiliar with that joke, we've been, uh, I, I've been subject to downright abuse in the discord. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I have apparently been declared the winner of the Conrad Werner lookalike contest. So uh, I will roll with that uh because i don't know what else to do so congratulations yes i think that i like I, I when i heard that i looked at my girlfriend and i was like you know what i'm gonna shave my head <laughs> 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 because uh for those of us or for those of you who listen but don't know what i look like uh, i have a hair helmet right now of blonde hair and it has been far too long since i've had haircuts so uh just like conrad uh, but yeah, I digress. Um, so I think we are ready to share our answers on what Conrad's sister's name is. And thanks so much for not totally mind fucking us with a none of the above answer. <laughs> because that would have thought about us all. it. But, but yeah, why don't we go ahead and, and share? Okay. I see some different answers right away. So I see, oh, I think I'm the only one who did not say B Cassandra. <sighs> 
The and correct I said, answer. I said if A. You, if you said B, Cassandra, you are correct. Oh, look Trying at that. to get on Andromeda. Oh, is that mentioned in Andromeda? Yeah, you yep. can you find see, her in Andromeda. Her. She's obsessed with... Oh, who is it that she's obsessed with? She's like Conrad, but I can't remember who it was. I think she's obsessed with Reyes. It, it might be. To, a, to get rid of... To get uh, away from her brother? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Um, well, clearly, I got to brush up on my Andromeda lore, and I knew I was going to have to do that ahead of some future episodes where we're going to be talking about the Andromeda Initiative. Uh, so that's a good one. Thanks, Sal, for the uh, total stumper. He stumped the host. So I just looked it up. She was obsessed with Sloan Kelly. That's yeah. Genesis, what do you got for us? Hmm. I think we'll go with uh, in Mass Effect 2, Garrus has a rare dialogue while in battle. If equipped with a specific gun, he yells out, I love this rifle. Which sniper rifle is Garrus's favorite? The 97D Man Viper, the 92 Mantis, the 29 Incisor, or the Black Widow? Which sniper rifle is Garrus's favorite? The Viper, the Mantis, the Incisor, or the Black Widow? Now we just talked about this one, and I have a goldfish memory, so I don't remember at all. I, I literally just finished a Mass Effect 2 playthrough, and I equipped him with two of the four of those, and he never said that, so I have no clue what it is. <laughs> oh boy oh boy so i think we might have a variety of answers here uh is everyone finished answering does anyone need to be reminded of the choices okay i don't think anyone needs to be reminded of the choices i think we've all written down our answers so why don't we go ahead and show them so i i hope i hope everyone can see what i wrote i see Someone wrote C, C, and I see another B. I see a D. Oh, this is a great variety. Uh, I see the incisor. I wrote Black Widow. So I wrote the Black Widow. Genesis, what's the answer to that question? Uh, the Black Widow does not exist in Mass Effect 2. I knew it. I knew it. <sighs> I knew uh, it was in three. God damn. No, sorry. Or that one is uh, the Legion specific weapon. Mm. Uh, but Garrus's favorite rifle rifle is C, the 29 incisor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look at that. We got two people, at least two people in here that got that right. Did I, I know Psych and Sovereign answered that one correctly. Uh, did anyone else get the incisor? That was my other option. That was the other one I was thinking. Wow. Of. Was great that was question. A, that was a 50, 50. It was either that or the mantis. I couldn't remember which one. Uh, yeah, I picked the Mantis, and we literally just talked about this. I told you, I can't remember anything. And you, you know what? Uh, Tom actually got that answer correct, too. Hey. <laughs> good work, Tom. Still acing it, and he's not even here. That's how good he is. So, amazing question. I've, ne I've, I've taken a lot of, you know, how much do you know about the Mass Effect trilogy quizzes, and I've never seen that one. So, props. Um, I do psych. also have a video game capture of him saying it. Oh, you do a That's screenshot awesome. of what weapon he was equipped with. Yeah. Don't, don't ever come at Genesis. Like, <laughs> like she doesn't know what she's talking about because she backs it up and she's, she's got her sources ready to go. Uh, so, uh, woe to anyone who would doubt her credibility. Uh, psych. Yeah, they're APA in APA format. So <laughs> they're an APA, they're an MLA, they're in AAA, they're in anything you want. Just don't doubt her credibility or you will end up looking like a dummy. <laughs> Psych. What do you got for us? All right. All right. So I've got in ME2, Jacob's father served on the Hugo Gerns back. What was the ship name? A reference to a president, a writer, a robber baron or none of the above okay so you want to repeat those answers and label them a you know yeah. through what um a a president 
B, a writer. C, a robber baron. D, none of the above. Would you believe I just had this come up? <laughs> not ne- not like including Mass Effect at all. I saw the name Hugo Grains back and what it was in reference to. I was like, oh, Mass Effect thing. Mm. And I don't remember. Don't remember. <laughs> So I feel like the answer to this one is going to be tricky because I I know the answer, but you could answer it two ways. Um, um, okay, I'm just going to go with my gut. Okay. Yeah. And you said, what was, it goes A through D, correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. Gotcha. Never mind me. I'm just scratching out a wrong answer. <laughs> You chose violence with the none of the above answer. I I know. I, I live dangerously. So are we all ready to present the answer? All right. So, oh, my finger's covering it. So I see a lot of Bs. I see a C and I see, what is that on the bottom? Writer. I see writer, 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 writer. Uh, and I actually originally wrote B. I scratched that out and I wrote D. I because... never change your answer. Yeah, yeah, because the correct answer was B, a writer. Ah, Isaac Asimov, right? No, uh, Hugo Gernsback, a Luxembourg American writer, inventor, uh, and responsible for one of the first sci- science fiction publication magazines. Right. The magazine is why I thought, oh, it's none of the above. The magazine is called the, or the awards are called the Hugos, right? Uh, for yeah. best sci-fi writer. Yeah. Yep. All righty. So that one's another. So I'm on, I'm on three straight wrong ones, by the way, for anyone keeping track at home. What uh, number question is, was that? That was number seven. seven. Okay. So that is number seven. Um, Okay, so now we are on round two. I'm gonna try and what you don't have help, one then? I'm gonna try and have us go. Oh no, I I quizzed the hell out of you guys, you know, a couple of months ago. So it's only it's only fair in my opinion that I give this time to you all, and I'm in the hot seat now. Um, so that's round one. Uh, why don't we take stock of the you know uh, point totals now that it's the end of round one, and then we will proceed to round two. Uh, so uh, we'll go uh, around and say our point totals. Let's not. Uh, what are you sitting at? Five. Five points uh, total. Okay, and then Pipe Man, what are you? Sitting I got at? five answers correct. Sorry, oh, yeah. I'm keeping. I'm keeping tally. Sorry, let me move that to actual points. So twenty-five. So she's five out of seven correct. Uh, that's twenty twenty-five points. And Pipe Man, I'm how about a, you? Yep, I've got uh, you know, f- twenty twenty-five. I guess. Okay, twenty-five points. And Vervada. I got 20 because I'm not good at trivia, I guess. Hey, I'm sitting right there with you at 20. Uh, I got the last three questions wrong. Uh, so I got, I'm sitting there at 20 with you. And, and Mike, how about you? What are you sitting at? I am also at 20. Okay. See, you're in good company. But out of so, solidarity. <laughs> he already, yeah, he already knew. He was like, I gotta, I gotta stand with N7 and Bravada. Sovereign, how about you? I got uh, six out of seven, so I'm at 30. Oh, Sovereign, the defending champ, still in the lead. You don't count your question, right? Correct. Unless it stumped everyone. Which right. I did. Unless it stumped everyone. So we have yet to right. encounter that yet. Uh, but Genesis, how about you? I'm right there with Sov. I'm at 30. Ooh, okay. We've got some neck and neck competition at the very <laughs> top. Psych. Also 30. Oh my gosh. So we have, wow. So we have a three-way tie for first right now. Is that right? Mm-hmm. With 30 points. And then right behind them, we have Let's Not and Pipe Man. And then sitting at the back of the train, we got me and Vervada and Mike with uh, 20 points. But, you know, let's put things in perspective. That's only a point differential of 10 points. So anything could happen with each question being worth uh, five points. And technically, well, I, Tom's in the back of the train with five points. Mm, that is correct. He did get one of them right. Did, uh, I wasn't keeping track. Besides that one question, was the right answer to any of those questions C? No. 
That was the only one. Okay, so Tom is sitting at five points. Uh, Tom, when you're listening back through this during the editing process, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> so moving on to round two, we're going to pour say, one out for our boy Tom. Sorry, real quick. Uh, I did not realize that you don't get points for your question, so you can change my score to 15, and I will comfortably sit in the back of the group. <laughs> Okay, Mike is doing the very transparent, very honorable thing. So hats off to Mike. Uh, good on you, Mike. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and start round two? Why don't we go in reverse order this time? So we'll spin it back around. And Psych, do you have a second question ready for us? Indeed, I do. Okay. okay. All right, guys. So um, to become a member of Citadel Security, one must... A, pass a rigorous physical test and psych eval. B, provide donations to the political elite. C, be recruited on a case-by-case -case basis. Or D, be sponsored by a counselor or ambassador. <laughs> That's a great question. Good job, Psych. That's literally um, never come up in my knowledge of the game. <laughs> so, and for those who don't know, Psych actually runs a tabletop RPG podcast, a Mass Effect themed, of course. It is following the stories of some Citadel uh, security officers. And I'll let him talk a little bit more about that uh, right as we wrap up the episode. So, but uh, for now, Psych, could you repeat the answers? Yes. All right. The answers. A, pass a rigorous physical test and psych eval. B, provide donations to the political elite. C, be recruited on a case-by-case -case basis. Or D, be sponsored by a counselor or ambassador. Ouch. This, I gotta say, this is a tough one. Psych is psych is stumping me right now, and my confidence has has certainly taken it taken a hit. Let's let's hope I can stab in the dark and and get this one correct. Hey, I'm I'm playing for keeps. I gotta retake some some uh, some honor from the last loss. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Let's keep in mind if any of your questions stump everyone, you get that those points instead. So. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, so I think everyone is is ready to show their answers for question number eight. Why don't we go ahead and show that? Oh, can you see mine? It's like disappearing. Okay, so I see A, 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 and a C. Vervada's with me with C. I answered C. Psych, what is the answer to that? The answer is D. You have to be sponsored by a counselor or ambassador. I never knew it that. sounded too much like specters. So I spelled no, sponsored amazing. wrong, but I did write D down. Oh, D? Oh, okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, got you. Sorry, Sovereign. Okay. I saw a C there, but okay. Yep. Man. Sovereign got it. Damn. You almost you almost got those points, Psych. You were you were <laughs> razor thin. You were that close. But you you didn't stump the defending champ. So you're Not telling yet. me every C sec er officer was sponsored by an ambassador? Or, or counselor, but yeah, counselor. Uh -huh. That's so impractical. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where you. I'm trying to remember where you learned that in game. Does Garrus tell you that, or is that in the uh, Codex? Uh, that's in the Codex under the uh, the Citadel. Uh, right, secondary. right. Literally never looked at the Codex. Yeah, I know you talk, <laughs> I know you talk to uh, Garrus a lot about CSEC, but I, I couldn't remember where you learned that. No, it's yeah, it's just listed in the Codex along with a bunch of other you know uh, stats about the Citadel, um, like size and uh like numbers of uh constables and stuff like that like and that was that was good timing you know for that for that question uh psych because and listeners of this podcast if you've been following along then you might be like well wait a second why haven't i learned anything about that and why haven't i really learned anything about csec yet that's because we were holding that off until we were done with the lawless factions uh which we are about to wrap up actually we are going to cover the blood pack uh and then maybe one or two more and then we will talk about CSEC. So nice timing with the question, uh, Psych. You're welcome. Uh, awesome. Uh, okay, moving on. Question number nine. Genesis, what do you have for us? All right, I'm going to go with my most difficult one, I believe. Okay. In Mass Effect 3, we speak with an unnamed child in a vent. How many times do we see this child alive before fully escaping on the Normandy? 
And can we elaborate is, are you counting one mission as once or are you counting multiple instances within one mission as multiple times? So the way that I'm looking at it is like each time that you see the child before getting on to the Normandy. And it's not like different shots you see him and it's like specific scenes. Cause I can think of a time when he's on screen and then it shoots to a different angle of him also on screen. If it's within the same cut scene, it counts okay. as one. So this is open-ended. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four. How many times do you see him? A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four. One, two, three, four. She declares a trivia war. All right. Um, Most times I'll you've stumped me. It's been, I know it's, I know it's one or the other. Okay. Let me, let me rack my brain. What a cruel question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, um, uh, my ego's taken a real hit, uh, which, you know, if I'm being perfectly honest, it probably could stand to. I mean, I do host a podcast, so it's kind of required that you like listening to yourself talk, I think, if you do that. Uh, <laughs> same, same goes for Tom. I'm taking a hit at both of us. Um, so... Number nine, we're all ready to show our answers here. And the, and the, the answers were possibly one, two, three, or four corresponding, I, I suppose, to A, B, C, and D. So why don't we go ahead and show those? And I see, I see C, I see four, which would be D. Uh, I also wrote four D. Uh, and then Psych, what did you write there? Did I see 20? Uh, well, Is that two? Okay. Oh, that's that C? Or C? Yeah, that's C. Sorry. That's oh. C. So that, that would be three. Uh, yep. Okay, so Genesis, what was the right answer there? The answer is D4. So can you oh, list all the instances? You see him playing with a toy ship at the, right at the beginning. Then, uh, wait, I, I want to make sure that I get them in order. It's the toy ship. Then you see him running away in a, not a cut scene, but when you are with Anderson and you are shooting the husks for the first time, if you look off to the side of the building, he is there and you see him running. I in didn't the know that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's right before the vent scene. Yep. But you said the cut scenes though. She said not just the cutscenes, right? Oh, uh, okay. I don't know. I'd argue I only saw him three times. I never I, saw him. I only remember seeing him three times, it's, but I was like, there's got to be an extra one in there. that wasn't there. I have there, the screenshots of him he, standing he definitely outside was. of the building. I can vouch Ooh. for Genesis here, and, and not just because I answered that one correctly, <laughs> but <laughs> because I do remember seeing him, and this is kind of a uh, shameless moment of mine, but I was like, I wonder if I can just kill him early. I tried. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a whole thing about like violence against children in video games in, in case you didn't know that. So there was no way that that was going to be possible. And I already knew that. Uh, He's too fast. I don't know. You watch him burn in one of the nightmare sequences. So it couldn't have been too strict. Yeah, they, they played hopscotch with that rule, especially there with the star child at the end. Um, but very happy you didn't mention how many times do we see him in the dreams. Like, oh my gosh. I was, I when that, she right? started, I was counting dreams. It's like, oh God, oh God, oh God. <laughs> but then we yeah. see him in the vent and then again while escaping on the Normandy before he gets blown up. Yep. That, that scene made me cry. Yeah. Because, and, and, perfect looping this in with you know mike's expertise and and I, I believe pipe man has some of that expertise as well the music and in leaving earth is just so poignant it's like so impactful i just want to get a little comment here from mike uh about what did you think when you first heard leaving earth and when you played the game uh basically the same 
as you. I I was actually really struck when I first started Mass Effect 3 because uh, the tone of the game is so different from the other two, uh, musically and just in everything else that you do. I. I tell people that Mass Effect 1 and 2 kind of seem like TV shows and that they're very episodic and you can go uh, from mission to mission and Mass Effect 3 feels like you're just playing a movie like it kind of feels like you are Shepard going along and getting PTSD basically because you just are like going the whole time and it kind of feels like okay I can't stop now but it, like this this just happened I need to I need to do this now and so yeah I I think uh, that's a a very powerful moment musically that like comes back in uh, in the rest of the game. And that you're right, like you just feel the urgency, you feel the gravitas of everything that you're doing, and it's just one haymaker after another. Uh, that and and not just you know narrative wise, but but music wise too. Um, Another one that uh, we will talk about later and nice little uh, mid show announcement to everyone is that uh, pipe man, Mike and I, uh, and Tom are planning to have a episode of the lore cast specifically dedicated to the music of the mass effect series. So, uh, we'll be talking a lot more about this. And if you're interested in that, definitely keep your ear holes open, uh, because <laughs> we will, we will be, <laughs> we won't be presenting that one. I'm not sure when I got to work it in the creative schedule, but man, am I excited to talk about that one, especially Rannick Rannick has has amazing soundtrack that is probably one of my favorites uh, but you only get that one i think if if things go awry um yeah i couldn't i couldn't give you too uh, detailed an answer on what i what i think of leaving earth uh because not only would it potentially give you a hint about one of my questions but also yeah we will be talking about it in depth another time well that is a perfect segue because it is your turn to ask us a question mike Oh, or, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I actually, I believe I skipped over Sovereign. So let's uh, go. We're going backward in order. So Sovereign, uh, why don't you go ahead and ask us your question? All right. Well, that's a tough one. I don't really have any tough ones. I'll go with this one. So how long is a Reaper Dreadnought? A, two kilometers. B, two miles. C, two, mo two nautical miles. Or D, two inches but they use an intricate system of levers and pulleys that are constantly adjusting a series of mirrors to produce a far larger image mm, mm. been there definitely sounds like one of those uh, can, you, can you repeat the answer yes i can uh, so how long is a reaper dreadnought a two kilometers b two miles or c two nautical miles i got a feeling i have to repeat d i think everyone knows that's not it I don't like this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one was pretty detailed. And I think for those of us who are avid readers of the codex, uh, as well as other external media, we might find this answer familiar. So why don't we go ahead and show those? So I wrote A, two kilometers. I see A, I see A, I see A, I see B. Uh, and Mike, uh, did you already show yours? I didn't I didn't quite catch yours. Uh, yes, I said A. Oh, okay. So we have all A's and, and one B. So what's the answer, Sovereign? The correct answer is C, or pardon me, A, two kilometers. Yep. <laughs> psych. Not yep. you, psych. <laughs> I literally guessed because I'm like, Bioware, Canadian, not Miles. <laughs> I think yeah. in my head I got the, I got the which one was kilometers and which one was miles wrong because I was thinking kilometers but I could not. Those tricky remember. Canadians. I can't believe no one picked D. I wanted to, <laughs> but someone removed it from the running. <laughs> Well, I, I make that joke about those tricky Canadians because Sovereign, you're Canadian, right? Indeed. Yep. Oh, Canada. Uh, Mike, what's your question? All right. So famously, I can't talk can't talk about uh, Mass Effect music stuff without bringing this up. Uh, famously, Morden Solis sings us a song in Mass Effect Two. Uh, 
This song is a reference to what famous Gilbert and Sullivan operetta? Is the answer A, HMS Pinafore, B, Pirates of Penzance, C, The Mikado, or D, The Yeoman of the Guard? And can you repeat those answers, please? A, HMS Pinafore, B, Pirates of Penzance, C, The Mikado, or D, The Yeoman of the Guard? And before we show our answers here, I have a little bit of connected trivia to that. Uh, the original voice actor for Morden Solis is actually tied into all of this because he was involved in a 1985, I think, 1985 or 1987, Correct. 1985 production of this musical. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish writing my answer. And I think that we have everyone i didn't have space to write the whole thing uh but why don't we go ahead and show our answers i see so i answered b pirates pirates of penzance uh, i see b pirates of penzance i see b i see b i see b and i see is that pirates of penzance for you sovereign b i can't yeah it's b okay yes so we all answered b Yes, good job, everyone. So this, uh, the the actual song is called Modern Major General oh. from uh, maybe the most famous Gilbert and Sullivan operetta, Pirates of Penzance. I actually think this is a much, aside from like the lyrics that they, that they wrote for it, I think that this is actually a much funnier, more complicated joke than most people realize uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the song uh, is kind of the the major general talking about all of his qualifications and this was kind of back in the day when a somebody who was like a general in the british army was expected to be like a scientist and a, a literate person and skilled in math and knows about philosophy all that kind of stuff so a very well-rounded renaissance renaissance man but there's one thing that he doesn't really know very much about and that is war uh so it's kind of like he knows everything about everything except for the one thing that actually matters. Uh, and then the reason I – this is a, pr a pretty deep cut for musical stuff, but uh, – the performance practice for that song since it is so famous and it is it is a tongue twister i highly recommend everybody go uh look up uh performances of modern major general it's very fast and it's kind of a, a showpiece where it is very common for the uh soloist who is singing that song to get a standing ovation because everybody knows like how how difficult it is to sing and it's like such a showy thing it is very common for them to get a standing ovation and then they come out and do it again and sing one chorus uh again as fast as they can or even you know a second second and third time faster and faster and faster basically see how fast this person can sing it before they uh go on and it's also what you would call a quote-unquote patter song which is a song where you're kind of talking a little more than singing uh if you'll remember more than it says uh they always had me do the patter songs which i think is really funny because as a solarian since he talks and thinks so much faster than every every other uh species that nobody would be better at singing a tongue twister like modern major general than a solarian who happens to be into musical theater that is that is amazing and i never knew that before but it makes so much sense and there's so many fa that, that joke is so funny on so many different levels then uh especially having the voice actor having already done that production i mean i would have loved to have sat in on the writing team's meeting when they decided that they were going to implement that joke um but yeah that's awesome uh thanks for the context uh there mike um but Vervada, uh, what question do you have for us? Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. Once again, I think I, I did them too easy, but we'll see. Um, what is Ashley's rank in Mass Effect 1 in the Alliance military? A, gunnery sergeant. B, deck chief. C, gunnery chief. D, 
D, petty officer. A, gunnery sergeant. B, deck chief. C, gunnery chief. Or D, petty officer. All righty. So I think we've all answered that one. Uh, why don't we go ahead and... <laughs> I did it easy again, didn't I? <laughs> well, there's a there's a trick in there. There's a trick in there, yes. certainly. I'm, uh, I'm but, guessing you got it because you recognized but, well, it. Well, we did just talk about it on an episode of Two Girls, One Ship uh, that I spoke all about Ashley on uh, and all of the polarizing features that she carries with her. But why don't we go ahead and show our answers? So I wrote C, that would be gunnery chief. And I see a lot of C's. I see a lot of gunnery chiefs. I think, did everyone answer that one the same way? I know Tom answered it C. And Tom did answer it C. Oh. So this is another one in Tom's category that he got right. Yes, it's gunnery chief, which makes no sense, but it's fine. <laughs> there is I mean, some consistency issues with the rankings yeah. and the military stuff. Yeah. According to Mass Effect Wiki, they only have the Navy in existence now because space needs ships and the Marines, like in the U.S. military, are kind of a part of the Navy, even though they're the really own thing in the U.S. military. But in Mass Effect world, the Marines are just a subsection of the Navy. So there's no such thing as a gunnery chief in reality, but there is in Mass Effect. <laughs> And, it, you know, in, they use soldier interchangeably with Marine, which probably just riles up all of the former oh, yes. Marines and, and existing Marines. And uh, Pipe Man, you've served before. <laughs> How do you feel about those being used interchangeably? Um, I like the idea that they're trying to create sort of a different rank structure and, you know, try to borrow certain terms from different branches. But, you know at least try to keep it consistent you know if you're gonna if you're gonna like mash terms you know at least mash them in the same way and yes the marine corps is a department of the navy cool. the men's department yes <laughs> <laughs> i've heard so many marines say that to me i know got any cramps yeah. <laughs> Isn't are there, you hungry uh... It just, there's left hand saluting in Mass Effect 2, either by mistake or something. I thought that was supposed to be a great level of annoyance. Oh, is there really? I never noticed that. Yeah, Caden does it. Oh, no. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if it's intentional or if it's just how they kind of coded it. It does. Uh, there's when he, when you reintroduce with him in three, there's this odd cut. He does this side and then it flips to this side it's very weird but yeah you know they could play that off in the writing team that Caden literally thought Shepard was dead and so he was just so frazzled that he's like uh <laughs> but then again at that point Caden's been serving how long so you know yes yeah, those L2 implants man. <laughs> yeah the l2 implants I mean, and the lt for femships uh, he's already like thrown all kind of official whatever out the window so it's just caden yeah that wouldn't that would be just caden so uh moving on pipe man what question do you have for us um well i think we're, i'm gonna have to turn the heat up a bit um because we have what three people who haven't gotten anything wrong yet so, <laughs> um what type of condensate does the M622 avalanche produce in order to freeze its targets? Is it what type of condensate? Is it A, the uh, Higgs boson, B, Bose-Einstein, C, anti-lepton, or D, Fermi-Dirac? So what, I abstain. <laughs> uh, which is the uh, the... Uh, form of uh, subatomic particles. What type of condensate does the M622 avalanche produce? Is it A, Higgs boson, B, Bose Einstein, C, anti lepton, or D, Fermi Dirac? All right. This is this is a stab in the dark for me. Uh, I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, I see Genesis is raising an eyebrow. Uh, Sykes Kitty Cat has joined uh, the the party of Kitty Cats here with our patrons, um, <laughs> and Sovereign's leaning back in his chair. I think Sovereign is pretty comfortable with his answer. Oh. Um, no, <laughs> he laughed. All right. Um, so why don't we go ahead and show our answers? So I've. Above. 
I've answered A, Higgs, whatever it was. <laughs> and I see C, Bose Einstein. I see B, I see a, another A, Higgs. And I see another B, Bo, Bose Einstein. And Psych, I didn't catch yours. And I see a D there as well. And I, oh, I think Sykes is, is B, uh, so Bose Einstein. So what is, what's the answer to that, Pipe Man? So uh, the correct answer is indeed B, Bose Einstein. Wow. And uh, what a real thing. So it is, yes, I, I can thank BBC for this because I actually read an article on that the other day. Right, that's why I did this afternoon. As I I read an article on subatomic particle physics. And like an hour later, <laughs> like I'm so uh, lost. But, uh, scientist. I owe yeah, BBC I only, News that one. I, I love, put A because it was the only word I recognized. There's like tangible science behind Mass Effect. I think we should do, you know, see if we can find an expert to talk about the actual physics and, and science behind it because it's really fascinating. Absolutely. And we are definitely going to have a series of episodes diving into the science of them. But I want to make sure that when we get to those episodes, we have experts lined up to talk uh, because, you know, both me and Tom, our training has not been in the science fields, you know, the scientific fields, um, not at all. Uh, so <laughs> we will be just straight spouting lore, but we won't be, be able to really talk about the real world applications or non applications of those theories. So, yeah, we do definitely want to line up some scientists to talk about that if you're listening and you're a scientist uh or you're a physicist or you're a chemist or anything like that and you'd like to talk about mass effect lore hit me up uh actually i think we can that? take this offline there is an opportunity through skype a scientist where you literally skype somebody to talk about any topic that you want to talk about that's that's pretty cool i never knew about that uh maybe we'll have to set up special stipulations so we're like hey just so you know you're being broadcast um but yeah that's that's pretty cool we'll definitely have to offline about that sounds very promising for the listeners for the future of the show and i can't wait to get to those episodes but first let's not you have the last question to ask us in round two what do you got all right which comedy show used the song Leaving Earth from Mass Effect 3 in the sketch Laron Can't Laugh? Oh, sorry, I didn't read any of the questions. Uh, it's, <laughs> sorry, A, Saturday Night Live, B, Key and Peele, C, Portlandia, or D, The Eric Andre Show? Man, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. Nice, nicely done. Um, can you repeat those answers again? Yes. A, Saturday Night Live. B, Key and Peele. C, Portlandia. Or D, The Eric Andre Show. Do you say the character name one more time? Uh, the sketch is called Laron Can't Laugh. All right. This is a curveball for Mass Effect trivia, and I love it. I don't know how you formulated this question, but uh, that's Literally, awesome. like five questions in, I remembered that it was a thing, and I muted myself to listen to make sure it was actually there, and then I wrote this. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. All right. So... Let's show our answers. I think we're all done. Um, so for question number 14, we have, I've answered B, Key and Peel. I see B, Key and Peel. I see B, I see D. I see another B. And I see, I can't see what uh, Pipe Man's is. Is that C for Pipe Man? And I see, I can't see what uh, Vervada's is here. She wrote Eric Andre. Andre. Eric Road Andre. D. Okay. I thought it was C and then I had to scribble out a D. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. all right. Um, so what is the answer? The correct answer is B key and peel. Yeah, there we go. I remember my go. parents used to watch key and peel when it came out and I remember being in another room and I heard coming from there and I like ran over like, what the heck is happening? And it was just, it was key and peel. I was so shocked. I have you watched Key and Peele, and I was going to guess that, but then I was like, that's too obvious. It can't be that. 
<laughs> that was that was a great question. Very, very great question. Props to you. I bet most of our listeners have probably never been quizzed about that before. Um, so that's round two. Why don't we do another point check just for round two, right? Um, so I've answered five of the seven questions in round two correctly. So that would be 25 points for me. Uh, and uh, Psych, how many did you answer correctly? I answered uh, four of them correctly. So that's a whole 20 for me. Okay. And Genesis? I also got five, right? So I'm at uh, 50 point total. total 50 total what are you at total again Wait, psych no hold on total 50 50 well, so no, you're tied. I'm at 55 no i'm at 55 ah 55 gotcha and sovereign how about you i am at 55 oh we got a we got a neck and neck okay nice mike how about you my total is now 30, but I'm feeling real good about round three. Okay. All right. Round three will be the final round, by the way. Um, Vervada, how about you? I'm with Mike. We're buddies. Okay. Gotcha. And Pipe Man? Uh, I only got three that round, so grand total is 40. So that was, yeah, that was a tough round. Uh, let's not, how about you? What are you sitting at? I got five questions last round, so I'm at 50 points. Awesome. So, so we've got two people with 50 points. We've got two people with 55 points, two people with 30 points and one with 45 points. And, and Tom, been, with <laughs> 10. Tom with 10. <laughs> um, oh wait, was Keen so, Peel a C answer? That was, that was B. a B. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I answered five correctly that round and I answered four correctly last round. So that would put me at 45, 45 points. All right. Moving on to round three. This is the final round. So pick your hardest ones, pick your hardest questions you got left and we'll answer them. Does anyone think that they have the hardest question of the group? Psych. Oh God. I'll just, just go for it here. Um, all right. Why does Anderson resign his position as Earth's counselor? A, it hasn't been revealed. B, Cerberus blackmailed him. C, he ran off with Sanders. D, he had to get away from Udina. <laughs> Udina, he's a foil. <laughs> Udina, he's something. <laughs> he's, he's annoying, I'll say that. Um, and he's very well written to be that way. Um, so can you repeat those answers one more time? Absolutely. A, it hasn't been revealed. B, Cerberus blackmailed him. C, he ran off with Sanders. D, he had to get away from Udina. Sorry, I've run out of paper. <laughs> All good. You can just start holding up like hand signals. A, <laughs> B, C, D. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Thanks I've got my answer. Uh, <laughs> I've written it on the back of an envelope. Uh, very professional. Okay. So everyone got read. Uh, there's a dog in the hallway. I don't know if you heard that, um, but <laughs> let's show our answers. So this question number 15, I've written C ran off with Sanders and I see D I see a, I see a, I see a, I see B. What is the answer? Psych. The correct answer was C. He ran off with Sanders. It was all what? Part of <laughs> yep. Yes. Why don't you tell them which uh, book that's the plot of? Uh, that is the, I might be getting my uh, books, uh, but retribution. I believe you're correct about that. Yes. Um, Sanders and Kaylee get involved in a new mission uh, that's dealing with Paul Grayson again uh, and Cerberus and some Reaper tech and a whole bunch of stuff goes sideways. And one of the things was about end of act one, he's like, I'm done. I'm out of here. Let's just go do the mission. And that's what he does. But he doesn't tell Shepard that. <laughs> Oh. So 
that's uh yeah so I that was a that great that, question I, I knew something with them happened in the books but i guess i just assumed it was like pre-canon and so it didn't even occur to me that that would be the that's, reason i gotta reread that book mm-hmm. all right well okay so I, I was this close again you got it right sam you were the, yeah, the only one the, that, that external media you know yep, i'm yep. Uh, quite the stand for those uh <laughs> Genesis, uh, why don't we just go in this in this order again? Four humans. Who is the oldest? Miranda, Shepard, Caden, Joker. Who is the oldest? Miranda, Shepard, Caden, Joker. okay so i've answered uh and i think everyone else has as well and sorry this is probably gonna be a little difficult to read uh, but why don't we go ahead and show our answers? I wrote Joker, which would have been D, I believe. Uh, and I see Caden. I see uh, I see A, which would have been Miranda. I see C. Wow, we have quite the variety of answers here. Uh, Sovereign, I can't read yours. Um, it's a Hail Mary. It's A. <laughs> oh, okay, A. That would have been Miranda. Uh, what is the answer, Genesis? It is Miranda. Wow! Oh. Look at that. Oh man! That genetic engineering. I'll take it. Yeah. Wait. Mar when was she born? Twenty-one fifty. How old is that? That makes her four years older than Shepard, three years older than Caden, and mm -hmm. five years older than Joker. Joker is the baby of that group. Wow. So I was the most wrong. <laughs> well, there we go. Caden was like 30 in the first game. Yeah, I thought for sure it was Caden because I had no idea how old Miranda was. And I knew he was older than Shepard and just assumed he was older than Joker. If I remember correctly, Miranda is 36 at the beginning mm. of Mass Effect 2. I want her moisturizer and her GMOs. Yeah. Can I ask you about your skin routine, Miranda? Um, all right. <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, yeah, did you watch the TikTok? I pride myself on oh. being absent from TikTok. <laughs> but that is for another episode. Uh, possibly one about cybersecurity. Uh, Sovereign, what do you have for your toughest question remaining? See, I don't really have tough questions, though. Um, I'll go with this one. According to Legion, what name did Sovereign use to identify itself to the Geth? A. Nazara. B. Nazareth. C. Nazare. Or D. Bill from Accounting. So that's hey, according uh, to Legion. Bill from Accounting? <laughs> We're the genetic destiny of yeah. the future? Genetic destiny of your taxes. <laughs> um, according to Legion, what name did Sovereign use to identify itself to the Geth? A. Nazara. B. Nazareth. C. Nazare. Or D. Bill from Accounting. Tom, I thought we talked about using my real name on stream. I'm not appreciative of this. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill is such a good accounting name. I know. Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> Bill Nye, the science guy. There's your accounting science guy. Show. That'd be wild. Oh, my God. Fairly soon you have to pay his rates, though. His cameo rates aren't I'm not going to be able to fit my answer on here, but let's just go ahead and show our answers. I've wrote B, Nazareth. Uh, I see B, I see A, Nazara. I see uh, A, Nazara. I see A, Nazara. What is the answer? Is it Nazara? The correct answer is A, Nazara. Wow. I had, I never knew that. That is amazing. I don't, That uh, doesn't even sound familiar to me. Legion tells it to you, I want to say, near the ascent of Mass Effect 2. Mm-hmm. 
have I played I remember, these games? <laughs> I can't remember if it's after the suicide mission or not, but you, you hear it from Legion at the end of Mass Effect 2. I think it might be because I went through all his dialogue right now and I have to replay the end of the suicide mission for reasons. <laughs> Certain so, plot important characters decided to die at the last second. So Nazara, in case you never knew that, that was how Sovereign referenced himself or itself. It's uh, uh, yeah, itself. But and let's it's never mention again. Let's not forget about Bill from accounting because I'm a little suspicious of him. Like the secret villain. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't mean that he is not a reaper. Look, if you were a reaper and you were trying to hang low, wouldn't what what more low pri- low profile place can you think of than in accounts payable? Thank you. I've been saying this for years. Yeah, and if you're a machine, did you think of the numbers you can process? You know, so there's somewhere out there, there's a listener who works in accounts payable, and they're like, hey. <laughs> Genesis is, is pointing to herself. Uh, but Mike, um, what what's the toughest answer or toughest question, rather, that you have left for us? All right, so... The soundtrack to Mass Effect features many examples of a classic musical concept called a leitmotif. Uh, you, you may have heard that not in musical terms because it is also just a uh, you know, common phrase, but it means something different in normal life. So in music, what is a leitmotif? Is it A, a compositional structure involving a musical theme and then variations on that theme? Is it B, a technique for orchestration? Uh, For those of you who don't know, orchestration is when you decide what instruments are going to play what parts in the music or what instruments are going to make up your ensemble. Is it C, a musical theme that suggests a person or idea? Or is it D, a harmonic structure that is particular to symphonic music. Like, for example, sonata form or a minuet and trio. So can you repeat the answers briefly? Uh, What are the choices? A, uh, theme and variations structure. B, technique for orchestration. C, a music theme that suggests a person or idea. Or D, a kind of harmonic structure you see most often in symphonies. Okay, we all ready to uh, show our answers? I think a couple of us probably took a stab in the dark here. <laughs> okay, a stab in the dark, and then there's this. So, um, eighteen, with Tom. Number eighteen. I have sided with Tom as well, and I wrote C. And I see a B, I see a C, and I see uh, a C as well. And this is encouraging to me because Pipe Man answered C. Uh, and I also answered C. Uh, so what is the answer, Mike? So the correct answer is C, a musical theme that suggests a person or idea. This uh, light motifs are particularly common in opera. Uh, you you will hear an awful lot about this when we have our music episode because I have a whole spiel that I'm I'm about uh, light motifs in music and they they exist in film scoring and stuff like that as well. It is basically a way that the the music can tell a story uh, just as much as the actual uh, drama that's on stage or. Uh, more than that for example well I'll talk about this eventually when we do this episode but uh, if you break down Siren's theme in the first Mass Effect game and Sovereign's theme they're very similar and Sovereign the Siren's theme is kind of like Siren's theme uh, or Siren's theme is like the Sovereign theme but just broken apart and that's some kind of like foreshadowing that uh, Sovereign is actually in, in control of Saren. It's, a, it's, it's very common to do that in, in operas especially to kind of use, use the music to suggest something. Like if you're like, oh, who could have done this? And then you hear the Saren theme in the background. You're like, oh, now I'm thinking about that Saren guy. 
So uh, what you're saying is we should really listen into the background music in Mass Effect more because it could give us clues. Exactly. Yes. I think adding on to that, Saren's theme is in the game over music yes. when yes, you die. So it subconsciously makes you hate Saren because if you're like me, you will die over and over and over again and you'll hear it a bunch. <laughs> My big takeaway from that is if you don't know the answer, just go with Tom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Maybe that's why he picked C. Who knows? <laughs> he um, knew. He knew. He knew ahead of time. Tom's cheater. It's it's rigged. Um, <laughs> let's let's call for his head. Uh, Bravada. What what do you got for us? What what's your question? Um, I was gonna feel bad because it's not exactly Mass Effect related, but after that question, I don't feel bad anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> Always so, happy to help. <laughs> of course. So N7 is a real designation in the U.S. military, and I'm pretty sure that N7 and Genesis are going to know this because we talked about it in our last episode of Two Girls, One Ship. What does N7 mean in the U.S. Mil- US Navy? A, special forces, B, training and development, C, intelligence, or D, I gave the answer already, it does not exist in the U.S. Navy. And um, the answers, again, are A, special forces, B, training and development, C, intelligence, or D, it does not exist. I'm going to seriously hate myself if I get this one wrong. Okay. I'm also guessing. <laughs> so, so if I get this one wrong, it's like, ooh. <laughs> had a whole right. episode on the Why don't we... Why don't we show our answers? So I've written uh, B, training and development. And I see A, I see, uh, what is that for psych? I can't tell. Uh, I see C, uh, intelligence from Vervada. I see, uh, I can't tell for Sovereign there. Uh, But Ah, B. B, okay, B, training and development from Sovereign. And what do you, what is the answer? For those of you who put anything other than B, you are wrong. It is trading and development. Genesis, you probably thought intelligence because I was intelligence, but yeah, yeah, sorry. No, N7 is the training and development department in the U.S. Navy. Well, the more that you know. So maybe that is one. I've heard so many origin stories about how they got the N7 designation in Mass Effect. Uh, The one that is most prevalent that I've seen is that it came from one of the art directors uh, who uh, saw N77 on some ski bindings and used that for the inspiration uh, for the N7 designation in Mass Effect. But I've also been alerted recently by one of our listeners uh, on Twitter. Actually, I think it was today that there are are a brand of farming equipment in Canada, primarily found throughout Alberta, uh, that have N7 on them. And it's like heavy machinery. Uh, So I think N7 might be a brand there. Uh, I I don't know because I do not live in Canada and I live very far from Alberta. (laughs) But Sovereign, have you ever seen anything N7 in Canada? No, I'm trying to think now. I heard about the ski thing, but the equipment you mentioned, not off the top of my head. But there's so many different variations of heavy equipment up here. It's easy to lose track. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Okay, so Pipe Man, what do you got for us? Um, so, which of the following is not an available cocktail at the Vortex on the Nexus? Ooh. On the Nexus? Which of the following is not an available cocktail is it a dirty squirrel b the tall moose c the horse choker or d the rotten scoundrel that's a dirty squirrel b tall moose c horse choker and d rotten scoundrel which of these is not one of dutch smith's recipes okay i have my answer looks like we've got another kitty cat that joined us uh i think everyone's done writing their answers so let's go ahead and show them i have answered c i'm siding with tom that would be the horse choker uh i see b i see b i see 
Uh, I can't tell what that is for Psych. Is that A? Um, a. And I see C. Uh, and it looks like a few of us sided, and I can't tell what that is for Sovereign, but I think a few oh, of us C. sided with Tom. Yeah, so Sovereign also sided with Tom. What is yep. that answer? Um, so the the correct answer is C, the horse choker. Um, oh, my God. I don't know what horses are in Mass Effect. So the horse choker is, it is a cocktail. I believe it is the one that Joker uh, talks about and drinks during the Citadel DLC party. <laughs> That's awesome. Everything else is done by Dutch Smith when you like procure like ridiculous ingredients from around Andromeda. That's awesome. I owe Tom two now yeah look at that i think tom yeah tom has answered three right is that right or no four now i think tom has answered four correct and he's not even here i'm also uh, gonna be honest i had it on my spreadsheet as like d horse choker and i went well tom's answering c for everything so let's let's give one to tom. <laughs> give him one yeah let's let's throw him a bone um okay so to wrap up round three let's not give us what you got all right, this is my favorite question that I wrote. All right. Which, if any, of these untrustworthy Turians is shown to be wearing facial markings or the colony paint? Is it A, Joram Talid, who is Kolyat's assassination target? B, Warden Curel, who is the head of the prison ship Purgatory? C, Lily Hyrax, the shuttle mechanic on Novaria? D, Lantar Sedonis, who betrayed Garrus and his team on Omega, or E, none of the above. So can you repeat that question, please? Yes. Which, if any, of these untrustworthy Turians is shown to be wearing colony markings or the facial paint or whatever? And those options, again, are A, Joram Talid, Kolyat's assassination target, B, Warden Curel, the head of the prison ship Purgatory, C, Lily Hyrax, the shuttle mechanic on Novaria. D, Lantar Sedonis, who betrayed Garrus and his team on Omega. Or E, none of the above. Okay. So, that one is a little bit of a stumper. I think, I, I don't see many people writing. So, does that mean that we are ready to show our answers? Not yet, not yet. Okay, need a second. Does anyone need to hear the options again? No, not the options. It's the question. It's the double speak that's throwing me off. Which, okay, if sorry. any, is not? Which which He's ones? He's wearing. Not, which ones three of, of the? <laughs> sorry, three of the options are barefaced, and not including none of the above. So one of the Turians has markings, yes. but all of them appear dis like not yeah. trustworthy because not having facial markings in Turian culture is considered untrustworthy yeah. because you're not showing who your clan is. So, yeah. so one or maybe none of these people are yeah. shown with it. You it's a little tricky, but it is a time. stump the people, <laughs> the answers, a Joram to lead assassination target B warden Curel, who's the head of the prison ship and purgatory or, sorry, the prison ship Purgatory. Uh, C, Lily Hyrax, who's the shuttle mechanic on Novaria. D, Lantar Sidonis, who betrayed Garrus and his team on Omega. Or E, none of the above. Okay, let's show them. So I've answered B, the warden. And I see Hyrex, I see C, I see C, I see B, I see uh, B, is that B, Warden, Warden Curl? Um, and wh what's the answer for that one? Let's not. The correct answer is D, Lantar Sidonis, the guy who betrayed Garrus and his team on Omega. Ooh. He's the only one who was wearing facial paint, but it's only on his lower jaw. There's like three blue markings right here. Wow. So, Great everyone question. everyone else on the thing is shown to be barefaced. Oh, uh, that was my first answer, then I scribbled it out. <laughs> oh man. Good I was question. gonna put that and then I was like, I'm pretty sure Hyrex had face paint, so I'm just gonna put him. No, the only no, one I was Hyrex sure of was, was B. In. I knew he didn't have it because I, I remember when I played it, I was like, Well, obviously we couldn't trust him. He didn't have any face markings. 
And Joram the only Talid, one I remembered. Joram Talid is the politician that Koliat is set to assassinate, and politicians famously in Turian culture are called barefaced. Yes, it's quite the insult to uh, call someone barefaced. Uh, also synonymous with duplicitous. Uh, that's a five dollar word. So <laughs> I don't I'll think take... anyone got that one, did they? Uh, did anyone get that one? I don't think anyone did. So you can count five points for yourself. Let's not. Wow, look at that in the final the final question well of the game. Thank Let's you. not comes in with the curveball and stumps us on Turian facial markings. Nicely done. Nicely done. Um, so, yes, very, very well done. Um, okay, let's take stock of how we did that round. Uh, let's not. What are you sitting at? How many questions did you get right that round? And what does that put you at in total? Uh, again, I only got five point or five questions right. So that puts me at 60 total. 60 total. Okay. Pipe Man, uh, have you completed your calculation yet? Uh, yes. Um, I got four correct that round, so that also puts me at 60. Also at 60. Okay, we've got a tie already. Vervada, what are you sitting at? I'm sitting at last. <laughs> How many correct did you get that round? Um, I got none because it's like almost midnight here and I'm tired. <laughs> To be fair, I did challenge everyone to pick the hardest ones that they had. Yeah, no, and it's fine. after um, after sorry. I I had uh, probably gone off the deep end with some really tough questions last time, uh, I think I probably ignited a certain level of of competitiveness in our patrons. Yeah, um, my mind so. is in Dragon Age right now, so I f I can only hold one fandom at a time. <laughs> <laughs> right on right on well let's um let's charge forward because our east coast uh patrons do need to get some sleep so uh mike what are you sitting at vervada i will challenge you for last because i am sitting at a whopping very impressive 45 points i'm still last well actually tom's you last. got me Oh, okay. I beat Tom. <laughs> you beat Tom. You beat a host of the show, so you did that's something. You you beat fifty percent of the hosts of the show. Uh, I think. I don't know. I haven't calculated mine yet. <laughs> um, Sovereign, what are you sitting at? Uh, I got four right that round, so I'm sitting at a total of seventy-five. Seventy-five. Okay. Genesis. I'm at sixty-five. <laughs> Oh, so close. 65. So Sovereign's still in the lead with 75. Psych, what do you have? Oh, I blew it that last one. I got four wrong in a row. So that put me a whole 10 points of that round at 60 total. 60 total. Okay, so I got to calculate mine. I got four right that round, so that would be an extra 20 points. I got five in the second round. That's 25 points. And then four right in the first round. Uh, someone that's better at math than me can probably figure out before me, but that's 20 plus 25 plus 20. So 65. 65. 65. It looks like Sovereign has won it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Genesis said uh, that we have tied. Um, I'm not even going to count myself in the hierarchy at all. I don't count. Um, but Sovereign, congrats. The defending champ has has won again in the trivia. And man, some of those questions were just brutal, um, especially, you know, good job on stumping everyone. Let's not uh, if you've been playing at home uh, and you performed better or you just want to share some of your thoughts on the answers, please do look in the show notes because you can join the discord that way. And I know that we'd all love to hear from you, especially if you outscored sovereign there, uh, then drop a line in the discord and and maybe we can have an in discord trivia challenge or something like that. Or maybe I can put together a, a Google Drive document or something like I've that. I've got more questions. <laughs> oh, it's, she's got more questions. And um, this one's just uh, just one for fun since I brought it up last uh, last time. Does anyone happen to remember what my favorite quote of the entire series is? Yes. I'm not, yes, yes, I do. Maybe. Oh. Oh. All right. Uh, what is it? Anyone? It's, uh, it's Tally's return a uh, phrase um god i cannot oh. you gotta name it i know 
<laughs> I know what it is, but I don't think I can, I don't, I can't phrase it right. It's not, it's not happening, but I know what it is. The return of, uh, against the sand. <sighs> Damn it. On time. I, Re- return of the jedi yes um <laughs> yeah it's it's a long tides of light and through shoals of dust yeah i will return to where i began uh so all right it looks like um some people definitely do listen to me so that's awesome and if you're shouting at your radio because you're like i listen in seven then i appreciate you in fact if you if you're still listening uh and you've completed our trivia show i really appreciate you and i really appreciate the patrons here thank you all so much for showing up i'm so happy to see some new faces uh mike let's not i i really hope that you uh continue to come back for more of these trivia shows and seeing me wipe out and lose uh and, and and, you know, I, I definitely need to brush up on my Mass Effect lore and let that be a lesson to everyone that there's always something more to learn with this game. I swear, it never ends. Uh, I never stop learning new stuff about this game. Um, but let's go around and we can just uh, issue a goodbye and let people know what you got going on, if you got anything that you want to share, and how they can get a hold of you. So let's not... What do you got going on? Uh... I'm on Twitter. Uh, let's not. I think it's with four L's and a underscore. I'd have to check. I don't really post anything, but that's it. Sure. And you're in the Discord as well. And I'm in the Discord. Okay. Pipe Man? Uh, easiest place to find me is, um, is, is on the Discord. I still kind of do Facebook, but only because the music industry demands that I have a presence there. Um, but just you know hit hit me up on um on discord that's the easiest way to find me awesome awesome uh okay and uh vervada um yeah i'm on the robots radio discord at vervada and then also through mine and genesis's podcast two girls one ship on instagram and twitter and in the discord and genesis uh speaking of the podcast what did you both just talk about uh the episode that released today was about shaira the consort in the fastest romance available in the mass effect trilogy um and then i had one of my former co-workers and uh, hardcore gamer girl yuri cat on to talk about her canon relationship with Caden alinko and on, I was listening in on that. I was actually moderating that chat. There are a lot of really hilarious, awesome tangents that you all go into. So I highly recommend if, if you're into video games and you like video game romances, go ahead and check out Two Girls, One Ship. Um, and uh, speaking of podcasts, psych i believe the mass effect blue shift podcast has officially launched right indeed it did uh november 15th we dropped our first like teaser episode um you know it's in, it follows four csec officers uh, who are brand new to the citadel as they try to and we do cases it's like uh, it's a little csi miami meets law and order in space awesome awesome well you got to check it out if you like tabletop rpg podcasts i guarantee you'll like that uh and if you love mass effect you'll like it um mike what do you got going on how can people get a hold of you if they want to talk mass effect uh probably the place i would respond fastest is instagram uh you can just use my name i am one of those rare breeds of people who uses their real name on the internet because uh it would be my my greatest dream for somebody to happen across say the mass effect subreddit and see my name and be like wait i know that guy isn't he my orchestra manager and then (laughs) hope hopefully those people will you know come up to me after rehearsal and be like wait you you like mass effect I also like Mass Effect. Uh, And then we can be friends or whatever. So uh, my name is Mike. My last name is Basak, spelled B-A-S-A-K. Go ahead and stalk me. Type my name into the internet. See what comes up. It'll just... (laughs) Oh, you have, oh, wait, you have opened the Pandora's box. You'll, yeah, well, I was going to say, the worst thing that you'll find is my work email, which is where I will probably respond faster to that than my personal email. I'm also on the Discord, but I am frankly pretty new to uh, things like Discord, so I'm very, very bad at checking it. So, All right. 
Well, uh, again, more more reason that everyone listening should join the Discord. Uh, we've got hundreds of people who are all Mass Effect diehards already involved in that Discord. So, um, and one of those people is our defending and repeat champ, Sovereign. Sovereign, what do you got going on? How can people get a hold of you? I'm pretty boring. I don't really have a, all that going on right now. Uh, I can be found on the Discord, and uh, if anyone disagrees with any of the results or wants to challenge it, I can be reaching the Discord at N7 Legend. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, it was N7 Legend hate mail, right? That, that was last N7 month. I had to change it. Too much hate mail came in, so I had to change it. Yeah, they were like, man, that Conrad lookalike guy is such a douche. Uh, Me and Sam, we're trying to get a, like a Mass Effect themed OnlyFans going, but we can't think of a name. Fornax on- is pretty good. Only stands. Only stands. <laughs> <laughs> so only only Give me super like five there. minutes, and I'm pretty sure I can come up with quite a few. This yeah. is my favorite porn on the Citadel. Sorry, is that too explicit? <laughs> no, it's not. Um, <laughs> no, um, I think my plug-in comment earlier was a little too explicit. And now that we're <laughs> at the end of the show and we've done all our plugs, it is time for us to say goodbye. Uh, so thanks so much for uh, to all of you patrons and to everyone who has listened uh, and participated along. Again, don't forget to share your results if you want to in the Discord. So, all right, until next time, uh, next week we will be talking about the blood pack so i hope you all can join us and listen in then uh because that will wrap up our main episodes of the lawless factions of the mass effect original trilogy uh if we think about some smaller ones we may cover them later uh, but that will do it for the original trilogy lawless factions so next week we are talking about the blood pack until then thank you all specters and i will catch you on the flip side